and then well, Evelyn Farkas, the, the other big story of the day. You actually knew about this uh, attempt to get and preserve information, and full transparency, we're doing some work yourself. Tell us well, about I that. Well, was, I was urging my former colleagues and, and frankly speaking, the people on the Hill. Mm -hmm. I, it was more actually aimed, aimed at telling the Hill people, get as much information as you can, get as much intelligence as you can before President Obama leaves the administration, because I had a fear that somehow that information would disappear with the senior people who left. So it would be hidden away in the bureaucracy um, that the Trump folks, if they found out how we knew what we knew about there the staff the Trump staff's dealing with Russians that they would try to compromise those sources and methods meaning we would no longer have access to that intelligence so I became very worried because mm -hmm. not enough was coming out into the open and I knew that there was more we have very good intelligence on Russia so then I had talked to some of my former colleagues and I knew that they were trying to also help get information to the hill a lot going on today. Yeah. Mark That's Halpern. why you have the leaking. Exactly. People are worried. All right. Put it in 10 seconds, Mark Halpern, all the news of the day. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure right today on the White House and the Attorney General to say more about what that meeting was about and why it wasn't disclosed previously. Um, okay. The president once again putting the Clintons in the crosshairs, suggesting Congress should investigate them over their own alleged ties to Russia. And there's new controversy surrounding House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes. News he visited the White House to meet with a source on his digging into surveillance of Trump and his team during the transition. Well, here's Nunes last night with O'Reilly. We've known about this long before. Trump actually sent his famous tweet out about the wiretapping at Trump Tower. Uh, we've known that there was additional unmasking of Americans' names. Uh, we had sources that had provided us to it, uh, that information. Uh, and so what I had to do is I needed a place that I could actually go and find this information uh, and review it. Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts kicks off our coverage. Good morning, John. Shannon, good morning to you. You know, as pressure mounts over this Russia investigation into what Russia was doing during the election campaign in terms of trying to influence votes, the president is returning to a familiar theme from the campaign trail, taking another page out of the Peter Schweitzer book, Clinton Cash, reminding people that while she was Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton sat on a panel that approved the sale uh, of a Canadian company to a Russian company, and this Canadian company owned one-fifth of the uranium reserves in the United States. Also talking about Hillary Clinton and the big red reset button and new revelations the Clinton campaign chair John Podesta may have failed to disclose stock he held at a Russian finance company when he took a job with the Obama administration. The president tweeting out this morning, quote, why is it the House Intelligence Committee looking into the Bill and Hillary deal that allowed big uranium to go to Russia, Russian speech, money to bill, the Hillary Russian reset, praise of Russia by Hillary or Podesta Russian company. Trump Russia story is a hoax. Make America Great Again. All of this comes as calls mount from the Democrats for House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunez to recuse himself from the Russia investigation after it was revealed that the information he released last week that appeared to at least partially vindicate the president's claims of being wiretapped came from a visit that came rather from a visit that Nunez made to the White House the day before he released that information. The White House yesterday said they don't think Nunez did anything improper. Listen here. We've asked both of these entities, both the House and the Senate Intelligence Committees, to undertake this review. So it is partially at our request that they're looking into this. He has said, from my understanding, on the record, that he is not that he did not meet with White House staff. In fact, Nunez has said that he met with an intelligence official, and the reason why he had to meet him over at the old executive office building was because there's something there called a SCIF. It's a secure compartmented information facility, and that the information he was looking at was on executive branch computers, and he couldn't look at it on the House system up there on Capitol Hill. Uh, White House officials I talked with this morning insist that there is still something out there that may come in the form of a series of requests to look at certain people and then unmask them. So I don't think that uh, we've heard the last of this yet, Shannon. Oh, certainly far from it. By the way, though, also President Trump today is going to push forward on something else. New repeals of Obama EPA regulations that happens today. 
He'll be heading over to the Environmental Protection Agency this afternoon to sign an executive order that will roll back some Obama era, uh, Obama administration era rules on climate change, the clean power plan as well. This will allow more existing coal fired power plants to stay in uh, operation. It would allow more to be built. You know, the president, they're putting on the coal miner's hat, uh, campaigned very hard on bringing back coal jobs to this country. The EPA administrator, Scott Pruitt, said earlier this morning that this executive executive order will help do that. Listen here. The clean power plan under the previous administration was really not about clean power. It's, it was about picking winners and losers. And the previous administration had an anti-fossil fuel mentality, and it cost us jobs, manufacturing jobs, jobs in the uh, coal sector and oil and gas sector. It's good to be about energy independence again. Now, it's unclear how many jobs in the coal industry this executive order may save, Shannon, because a lot of the move away from coal has been because of cheap natural gas as well as increased automation in the existing coal mines. So um, it's, it's a promise, and it's one that the president made on the campaign trail, but we'll see if it can come to fruition. Yeah, a lot of pushback already on that. All right, John Roberts live at the White House. Thanks, John.